The blanket represents a child-friendly village's commitment to protect children, end child labor, and promote children's rights, including the right to education. Blankets have special meaning as a kind of security. Uh, they provide warmth and they make us feel comfortable and safe. The village is saying to its children, you know, through this blanket that we made for you, we are pledging to protect you. Faces uh, child-friendly model is very unique. Uh, it's the way that they really mobilize villages to combat child labor and uh, promote educational access for all children. So when I came to the volunteering with ACE, I wanted to develop some kind of advocacy campaign to promote this idea of the child-friendly village. Uh, and this is when I started thinking about a blanket, using a blanket as an advocacy tool. Um, you know, blankets and quilts can be very effective for this. Uh, you know, they're visual representations of some kind of issue, and so then people, you know, all over the world, no matter what language they speak, they can look at these forms of art, understand the message of the people who created the blankets, um, and then, you know, feel something about that message, whether it's child labor or, you know, educational access for children, anything. I wanted the, the blanket to be a medium for the people of the child-friendly villages to tell their story about how they're working to end child labor and uh, ensure educational access for all of their children. I knew that the blanket was a great advocacy tool uh, for this campaign when I watched the documentary, The Price of Childhood. Uh, one of the three uh, child laborers in that film he says something uh, to the effect of, uh, the worst part about child labor is that we can't get any love or affection from our families. And I think this is what the blanket really represents. It represents the love and affection that a child-friendly village has committed to provide all the children. And I visited nine different villages throughout Southwest Nepal, uh, a base staff member and then a local base community organizer would always accompany me uh, to the villages. Uh, where we would have a meeting um, with people from the village. Usually these people represented, uh, they were children usually, representing the child club, and then sometimes also some of the adults have uh, come, people from the Child Friendly Village Committee. Uh, so we would go to the community center, which were usually very basic buildings, it's one room, uh, modern stone buildings. Um, and when we arrived, uh, the children were always very happy. Uh, and sometimes they would even welcome us uh, in the traditional Nepali way. Uh, they would give us a tikka, uh, like a red dot on our forehead, and then present us with beautiful flowers. Uh, so it was always a very nice welcome. So this is the third time mm -hmm. that... First time? Yeah, that I've come to this village, Majgaon. Okay. Yeah, the first time we met the children, and we learned about their village, mm -hmm. we sang some songs, they gave me some really nice drawings, but we didn't have the supplies to make the blanket at that time. And the second time? <laughs> so when we came a second time, uh, and we were sitting here at this, uh, this is the clubhouse, yeah? Mm -hmm. The child clubhouse. We were sitting here, similar to now, waiting because the children didn't come. So now we're here a third time, <laughs> and there are no children here. <laughs> so we're waiting. Uh, then we would go inside the building and after having a discussion where we would uh, talk about the child club and the village and some of the issues, how they've been combating child labor, uh, I would introduce the idea of the children's love blanket. And I would ask uh, the children if they were interested in participating and helping to make this blanket. Uh, and of course, you know, they were already active. Uh, you know, fighting child labor, so they always <laughs> said, you know, yes, we want to. Then the children, they worked in teams uh, to produce the squares, where each team was making just one square. Uh, and first they discussed the idea that they wanted to represent with their picture. Uh, we encouraged them to think about uh, children's rights and child labor and also, of course, education. Um, 
so they discuss and then they would uh, come up with a practice drawing before doing the actual sewing. We provided cloth to the children, uh, and this cloth was uh, scrap cloth from the Sally clothing that is then donated from uh, a local tailor. Uh, in the fall, uh, all the women, they have their clothes made especially for them by first buying the cloth and then taking it to a tailor and having it custom made for them. Uh, so there's always tons of uh, scrap, beautiful cloth um, laying around, and we had this donated. And the children took this cloth and cut out the shapes of their pictures and then sewed these shapes onto the back. After finishing, the children then uh, wrote some information about the picture they had made, uh, what the meaning was and what the picture was. Uh, and then we took a photo of them holding their masterpiece. And then after all the squares had been finished from all the villages, a process that took about one month, we then took all the squares to the local tailor who had donated the cloth, and we had them all sewn together. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, Eugene and Kiri uh, for uh, developing the children's love blanket, uh, which is a totally new approach for this and uh, our community. I think it is a wonderful concept uh, to represent the voice of children. Um, actually, we are very excited uh, to have children's love blanket and uh, uh, we are going to utilize children's love blanket as an advocacy tool uh, for uh, representing children's voice. Children are now um, able to feel their voice, what they feel from their heart and what they are now um, dreaming for, what they want to uh, have their dreams and how they want to have their rights and responsibilities. Uh, secure within their community. So I think it will be very useful uh, for in, for empowerment and uh, uh, encouraging uh, children to participate to uh, raise and demand their voice and needs. Nepal is really an extraordinary place, uh, and these very small villages that I visit are even more so. Of course, they're very poor but their ability to mobilize and come together as child-friendly villages is really the most amazing thing that I've seen. Ja, 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 jinde shami aane ke tale.